Hello and welcome back. If you are new here, my name is Jessica Abella. I'm a tax and accounting professional here in the greater Seattle area. Today, we're just going to zip through three quick tips if you need to report sales tax to Washington State Department of Revenue and you keep your books in QuickBooks Online. So first, we're just gonna set a few ground rules here. We are assuming that you have made sure that your bank feed is up to date. You've accepted all of your transactions, particularly revenue transactions, and that you are pulling your reports on the cash or accrual basis, whichever is consistent for you in reporting. Most of our small business owners report on the cash basis, meaning you include income when you have actually received it. Uh, but some businesses do report on the accrual basis, which means you report income as you have invoiced it, regardless of whether you've been paid for it yet. So with those basics out of the way, let's jump right into a couple of tips. So tip number one is to export your sales tax liability report into Excel. It's going to make it so much easier to do this reporting. So when you have your sales tax liability report open in QuickBooks Online, I should note this is a sample file and not live data, click this little arrow out to export, choose export to Excel, and now you'll have that data in Excel. This allows you to easily add totals, double check your numbers, and have a good source to save of how you calculated your numbers. Tip number two is to review this report, your sales tax liability report, against your profit and loss. This can be really important for finding missing income, miscategorized income, or service income. So if you have a business like this sample company where they have design income that is taxed as service and retail income that you collect sales tax on and wholesale income, perhaps income where you're doing an activity as a subcontractor for a general contractor, you need to be able to identify that service income which is not going to show up on your sales tax liability report. Sometimes also you'll find in your profit and loss, it may show excess income, which is actually transfers into your bank account from you personally, or a transfer between accounts that got miscategorized. And comparing that profit and loss report for the month or for the quarter against your sales tax liability report can help you identify when perhaps your profit and loss isn't showing your actual revenue. For tip number three, we're gonna look at two different versions of the sales tax liability report because if you are using QuickBooks Online's automatic sales tax calculation, your report is going to look one way and if you are not, it's going to look a different way. So this sample data, it is using the, the manual method where you add your own sales tax rates, you assign the sales tax rate to each invoice. And so my tips for you, if you are doing this manual method, two things. One, put on your calendar to every quarter, review your rates in QuickBooks against the rates with Washington Department of Revenue. The sales tax rates go up once a quarter, depending on legislation and such. Usually you don't have very many, if any, of your rates to update each quarter, but it's a very good idea to double check that you have the most current rates each quarter. The second part of that is that when you're updating those, it's a good idea to put the location code for each of your locations in the name, in the description of that sales tax item in QuickBooks so that when you are reporting with Washington State, it's very easy to see which location code to report under. One quick Excel tip, if you are totaling a column in this case, we're totaling this taxable amount column. If you click Alt and Equals, it will do your sum calculation for you without doing Equals Sum. If you don't know how to do that, you can also select Cells and it will tell you down in the corner what the sum is, what the total is. The other thing I wanted to mention on this particular one, we've taken that profit and loss total revenue. We're pulling the retail revenue from this taxable amount column. 
We're pulling the wholesale revenue from this non-taxable column. Again, that's usually doing work as a subcontractor. Make sure you have a reseller permit on file for the person that you that paid you if you're including income in that category. And then whatever's left is going to be service in this particular instance. If you don't have service income though, and you have this kind of a discrepancy between your sales tax liability report and your profit and loss, there may be something very wrong. So the other sales tax liability report I wanted to show you is if you are using QuickBooks Online's automatic sales tax calculation. So you put in an address on a invoice and QuickBooks calculates whatever that sales tax rate is for that location. Your report is going to look more like this. And there are a couple of things to note about this report. One is that this top Washington state line should include the total. So this is the total retail revenue, this is the total wholesale revenue, and then it breaks it down by location. The nice thing about that is that it gives you your totals and you don't have to do the math. The downside to that is that some counties in particular show up on multiple lines and it doesn't include the location code so it can be a little challenging to see where to report that, what location to report it to on Washington Department of Revenue. So the tip I have for you if this is the way that your QuickBooks file is running is to do a little math. So for in this extra column over here to the side if you put equals this tax amount field divided by the taxable amount field and hit enter, it will tell you what percentage is being calculated. The state rate is always 6.5%. The locations are over and above that. So when you're looking at a county in particular and trying to figure out which line, because in this particular instance, we've got Pierce County PTBA, non-RTA, non-RTA HBZ district. I have no idea what that means, but the state does. You can tell a little bit more easily from these percentages, which do show on that Washington DOR how local tax screen where that belongs. It's a little tricky in that sometimes this system is showing the same dollar on multiple lines. In this case, Pierce County this 3% may be a part of one of these other Pierce counties. Again, it's something you need to compare to that local rate on the State Department of Revenue site. I wish I could make that a little bit easier, but certainly doing this math makes it a lot easier. <laughs> so hopefully this was helpful. Definitely comment down below if this was helpful, if I created more questions for you. Um, feel free to leave those below. If you have questions about any other tax or accounting topic, leave those below as well. I'd love to see them and perhaps do a video on them later. I try to post a new video every week or every other week, especially during tax season, more likely every other week. Thank you for being here. I hope you have a fantastic day. Like the video if it was helpful. Subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you next time. Bye.